All right, guys. So last video I did was the uh, video on the Petters coilovers. Um, I had mentioned that my springs were uh, too soft for most public roads and that it would probably be best for a uh, track situation where there's no imperfections in the road. Somebody had mentioned to me uh, locally, why don't I just turn up the dampening? So here's why you can't turn up the dampening to compensate for bad, um, bad springs, basically. Bad springs meaning not enough uh, spring rate to them. So these springs are 6Ks. I really should have an 8K. Uh, so if I turn up the dampening, what I'm essentially doing is I'm basically taking the work of the spring and transferring that workload to the shock itself. Um, on a McPherson style uh, strut and spring combination, the spring dictates how fast the shock compresses and decompresses. On a coilover, it's the same principle. The coilover and spring dictate how fast each one of them will compress and decompress while the rebound, or not rebound, but the uh, comp or the dampening adjuster basically dictates how fast and how stiff the shock is. So if you turn your dampening all the way to zero, uh, that is gonna be the fastest reacting shock, but it's also gonna be the softest. If you turn it all the way up to 30, it's gonna be the slowest reacting shock, but it's also gonna be the hardest. So you have to fine tune the balance between hard and soft to get the suspension to, to, to do what you need it to do. Um, you can't just solely rely on changing out the dampening on the, the shock because what you can end up doing is basically transferring all of the, all of the load to the shock and you basically don't have a suspension. You have basically, I don't even know at that point if it would be what kind of suspension it would be. It'd just be, basically be a strut and no spring. So you're you're basically solely relying on compression and music compression of the actual stroke of the uh, the strut itself. I hope this helps you guys. Until next time, peace.